a purpose driven woman is a God pleaser you please God no matter what cost you Shirak Meshach and Abednego understood that they were on a purpose in Babylon it didn't matter if they were going to die to live in Christ it didn't matter what it would cost them Oh, the king threw them into the fairy furnace. They gave them a condition. He gave them a condition. They were willing to bow to God at the expense of their life. They proposed. Because you see, when you are on purpose, you must propose deliberately. Not to please men. You must propose. Number two, very quickly, the story of Tabitha. The story of Tabitha. The characteristics of Tabitha is that she was hospitable, she was kind. Acts 9 verse 36, Amplified Translation. It says now, Acts 9 36, TPT. It says now there was a follower of Jesus who lived in Joppa. A follower of Jesus who lived in Joppa. Her Aramaic name, Tabitha, means gazelle. Her Aramaic name, Tabitha, means gazelle. She lived her life doing kind things for others and serving the poor. If you look at scripture, the only took just one, one verse, not a full chapter, that Tabitha was mentioned. That's why I said I specifically had to select some women in the Bible. So that you can know that you, she, she wasn't popular, but she was purposeful. She wasn't out there, she wasn't in chapters. But you see, she was purposeful. She was there, saving the people, doing kind things, saving the poor, till her death. That widows had to gather to say, Peter, please come, 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 come. Tabitha is dead. She was, she was living the life. Serving, being kind. Because your home may just be hospitality department in church. Welfare. Your home may just be something that may not look like it's, it's, so, it's so loud. It may, sometimes some of you deviate from what God has told you to do because it's not loud. So if it's not loud, I'm not relevant. If it's not loud, I'm not purposeful. It has to be big. Let me bring it down. There are some of you that God told you specifically to join sanitation department in church. Eh? Clean toilets. So you rather prefer to join choir. But that's not your place. So many of you are here. Just like this example I gave. You have displaced the purpose of God in your life because there is an imagination of what your purpose should really be. Many times you have, compete, you have been competing with others because you see, it has to be like this. If it's not the altar, my purpose is altered. So it must be the altar. I must hold the mic. If I don't hold this mic, how will they hear me? But Tabitha was heard. A city gathered when she died. I may not be purposeful to the whole country, but what about your city? What about your room? What about your room? What about that your neighbor? Are you, is she seeing Christ in you? Because this thing about purpose is for, for, for men to see the reflection of Christ. What about that your room? What about that your neighbor? What about that your father? What about that your uncle? What about your church member? She was kind. In her death, she was remembered. If you die tomorrow, will they remember you for K? How much more kind? Who are you? Tabitha. Giving arms to the poor. Hospitable. Women. You have 10 years. People are crying. Your, your church member, your, your colleague, you are seeing the person every time, looking weary, looking anyhow. Your own is, hey, God will bless you. Then you will not go and gossip about the person. People of purpose don't gossip about people's needs. They fulfill needs. Women of purpose see a gap and they jump in. They don't need their name to be there. But God knows their name. That's Tabitha. She wasn't everywhere, but she was relevant. When was the last time you had to give out that money? When was the last time that you did not have to be in the hospitality department to be hospitable? It's not a departmental thing. It is a life of a purpose-driven woman. She was kind. Regardless, kind to the poor. 
Come on, small time. They announce. Come, come, you guys, come and contribute. You know, want to do something in church. Hey, church, they started again. Hey, hey, hey. You don't know how to do announcements, but you announce things like this. She was kind. She lived her life doing things, others, and serving the poor. Number, two, number three characteristic, jail. Jail. The bold and unpopular warrior. A purpose-driven woman is a warrior. Judges 4 verse 9. Deborah, this was the story of the Israelites. Deborah said, she said, Barak did not want, the, did not want to go into a battle without Deborah going. So Deborah was a prophetess. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. This was Deborah to, to Barak. For the Lord will sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Let's look at 17 to 21 very quickly. However, 17 to 21. However, Caesarea had fled away on foot to the tent of Jael. This was the person they were looking for. The wife of Heba, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the house of Heba, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Caesarea and said to him, Turn aside, my lord. Turn aside to me. Do not fear. And when he had turned aside with her into the tent, she covered him with a blanket. Then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I'm thirsty. So she opened a jug of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him. And he said to her, Stand at the door of the tent, and if any man comes and inquires of you and says, Is there any man here? You shall say no. Then Jael, Herbert's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple and went down into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. If you look at Judges 5 verse 24, the Bible says, Most blessed among women is Jael. The wife of Heba the Kenite, blessed is she among women in things. Jael was tenacious. Jael was bold. Listen, you know what I, read? I got from this scripture? There was a prophecy regarding that war. That you see, the brother told Barak, I know you are the warrior, you are the leader of the army, but you see, I'm paraphrasing. This victory will not be unto you, but unto a woman. Probably, do, do, could it be that she heard the prophecy? Could it be that she perceived prophecy in her life? But one of the things I realized from this scripture is that even though she knew the prophecy, probably she knew the prophecy over this war, but one thing she did, that she did not just hear prophecy, she was positioned. Because the purpose-driven woman is positioned in times of warfare. A purpose-driven woman is bold, is positioned in times of warfare. She was a bold but unpopular deliverer. She was positioned. In your positioning with God, you receive boldness. In your positioning with God, you receive courage to do the things that are beyond you. To carry out. Do you know that people have asked me many times, how do you do the things that you do? I can't explain it. How do you handle this conference? How do you do these meetings? How do you do it? You don't look like it. Because you see, when you are positioned in God for the fulfillment of prophecy over your life, it gives you boldness. It gives you the things that humanly you are not able to do. This was the story of child. She was there. Positioned. Because you see, when you are positioned in God, He will give you strategy to fulfilling prophecy. He will give you the strategy. Because of time, the last person and then we'll pray. Anna. The characteristics of Anna is that she was prayerful. You can't do purpose without prayers. Luke 2 verse 36 to 38. Anna. A-N-N-A. Luke 2 36 38. Look at the very interesting thing about Anna. Now there was one Anna. <clears throat> a prophetess. The daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age. And had lived with a husband seven years. So she was married for seven years. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years. 84 years. She did not depart from the temple. But served God with fastings and prayers. Night and day. She lived with her husband seven years. This woman was a widow. She didn't allow her circumstance make her deviate. 
She didn't allow her circumstances to make her drop on prayers. She didn't allow her circumstances to make her stay without God. You know, sometimes you are so carried away with the things that happen in your life and you will not know when you have left that part. There are some of you here that you used to pray very fervently. You will pray. Sometimes you are sleeping, you are mumbling words. But you see, a lot of things have happened in your life. There were times you were abused and you're like, no, God anymore. Oh, you lost a loved one. You're like, oh, there is no need to pray anymore. I mean, where is God? Where is God in this? Does God still exist? You have been trying different relationships. The thing doesn't seem to be working. Where is God? You are of a marriageable age, but yet, men are not coming. You're asking, where is God? There is no need for me to pray. But Anna, a widow of 84 years, even though she was a prophetess, waiting for the fulfillment of the redemption of Christ, waiting for the announcement of Christ, she stayed in the temple and day. She was fervent in prayers. Because you see, a purposeful person is a prayerful person. A purposeless person is a prayerless person. You can't fulfill purpose without prayer. She did not allow her status to change her state with God. She didn't. She didn't allow her circumstance to change what she needs to draw from God. It wasn't about whatever God can give. It was about her love for Jesus. No wonder the scripture that we read earlier. No wonder the scripture that we read earlier. In Ephesians 2 verse 10. It says they are lovers of God. So Romans 8 verse 28 says for we are his lovers. Who have been called to fulfill his divine purpose. I need to love God in and out of season. To be able to fulfill that which he has designed for me as a person. I must love him with all my heart. To do all that he has given me to do.